So while Anton Derashkevich is getting ready, I guess his slides will be switched on very soon. So I wanted to say the following before giving the floor to Anton. Actually, the section was organized. I think you can see it. You can see these people here, Dergi, the person that organized the section. Well, I want, I want to tell you that the community has experience of using Ron C with Postgres. And there are recommendations on Postgres setting that are published on the website. If you have regional specialists, you can send them to this website. This information is open and official recommendations for setting Postgres. And we have experience. This is a real experience. And, you know, it started as geek experience, well, almost. But now we have something to share with you. I'm speaking about InfoStart community and its representatives. Well, InfoStart community is a community of 1C specialists, and Anton is one of its representatives. Well, I don't know what it is. A round of applause, please. I guess he will speak about blockchain. Good morning, everyone. My name is Anton Derashkevich. I am from Novosibirsk. I represent Infosoft company. I am the head of IT department and the head of SLE and C optimization group. Now I would like to share with you with the following experience blockchain on C plus Postgres. We haven't found anything else in open sources, any other information about it. That's why the agenda says that this is the first presentation on this issue. I guess the most frequent question that I hear when I tell people about it, they say, why blockchain? Are you going to mine bitcoins? No, it's not like that at all. Why? First of all, this was an order of a major customer. It started from the following phrase, I want blockchain. That was it. So what are large companies faced with? Large companies that participate in shares market have to be audited once a year by a company from the big four. So one of the big four, for example, Ernst & Young, comes to your company. So about 10 people come to your company and spend their 10 months and they compare primary documents with your database because the main question of auditors is prove that we can believe reports from your database. And after that, this audit starts. It can last for several months and it's very expensive. And IT department of the company was given the following task. Help us to make this process faster and cheaper. Today, the company, when the project implementation started, 80% of infrastructure was transferred to Postgres. All IT infrastructure was on 1C. There are no other business applications. Uh, there are three data management centers, a lot of representative cities, seven hundred offices. This is a micro credit company. It works in the sphere of finance. And if and if some information is lost, it will bear losses, huge losses. So uh, they decided to make something using one C and Postgres. During the first meetings there were some prerequisites, that's why they decided that this will be blockchain. And if this is a blockchain, this should be distributed register. This is distributed register, so it should be scaled out and it should not be expensive. And they wanted to have it in one box, to use one distributive for everything to work. So it was to be cheap in one box and in Russia, and we do not know when the Iron Curtain of foreign software falls. Maybe tomorrow they will tell us that foreign vendors' licenses cannot be prolonged and we will have to download something from Torrent. So they decided to do it on Linux as well. And 
Linus, 1C and Postgres were to be used in one box. Well, not everything is for free, but there are a lot of open source infrastructure. So, uh, first of all, let's put aside all these currency draws, all the beauty of hashes, and from this boss technology that is frequently discussed on TV, we can see only the stack of, ge of genius and simple ideas. The first one is encryption, a synchronous encryption, for example. The second idea is checksum. We take a stable algorithm, the most stable one, and we calculate the checksum. The third idea is connectivity of the chain that is a bit more complicated. Every following link of a chain, every following transaction in itself has the hash of the previous transaction. And the fourth idea is distributed register that is blockchain. Why? Well, actually blockchain was devised for paranoics. Cryptocurrency was devised for paranoics with schizophrenia because people do not trust each other at all. Blockchain is needed when there are two parties that do not believe each other at all. From the very beginning, they do not believe each other. They are sure that they will be deceived by their partner. In that case, they need a third-party observer that will prove that, no, you were not deceived. Everything was like that from the very beginning. So we move on. So. Uh, you could have had encryption and become calm, but it's not like that. In that case, we will miss us all positive side effects. And a side effect of blockchain is that we protect data. We do not only prove that these data are valid, but we also protect them. So the question is, from whom do we want to protect them? Everyone can protect data from users. So uh, if they delete a button from interface, the user cannot do anything. Business application helps you to distribute rights very flexibly. But there are two kinds of super users, administrators and programmers. Only a signed agreement can protect you from them. And the passport of these people in the safety box of the employer. In 1C world, a programmer is the god. A programmer can do anything, can write a process. And you know, in 1C, there is auditor's trace by default, that is registration block. But a programmer can write a process in that ignores a record in the log. We will never know who changed something, and a programmer can switch off all the necessary systems. This person has complete authorities and they can do anything. This is one level, the level of application where one god exists. And after that, we have administrator god that can restore the base from backup if all today's data were lost. And it doesn't really matter that these data were encrypted. So now I'm speaking about distributed register, about blockchain. This is one thing. Secondly, a system administrator can delete one line. For example, his friend borrowed 100,000 rubles in this organization and system administrator can delete this line from the database. So it won't be possible to encrypt data. We won't be protected. And it's not possible to use technical solutions only. We will need to use some organizational solutions. The key for deciphering should be present in the safety box and it should be taken out for specific issues when you need a report, for example. And moreover, we go a bit deeper. We distribute these bases in a distributed register in blockchain to different people. And now the person that took a loan and that wants to delete, to have this line deleted from the database, we'll have to speak about it 
with three system administrators. It's bad when these system administrators are in one organization. And now let's recall the goal of the project, auditor. Can you agree with Ernst and Jan about it, about deleting one line? No, it's not possible. There was another side effect when the system started to work. And large shareholders of the company wanted to have a piece of register. So, to confirm that all the reports about the company performance are true and not something that was made up to increase or decrease the amount of dividends, well, we can use blockchain for it as well. The system is quite simple. As I understand, there are a lot of 1C specialists here. Configuration is 300 kilobytes. This is a zero platform. Free means for developing 300 kilobytes of code and the system is ready. That is quite simple. I tried to show it on the picture. On the right you can see the log and distributed register of blockchain. What is the problem? Blockchain is not about parallel operations. So it can be consecutive only. You have to link chains to each other. That is one thing. Secondly, blockchain does not provide for updates and deletes in its chains. Only insert and business logic. Well, once he provides for it and business logic of the customer says that there are sanctioned changes. For example, a borrower got married. And you know, girls can get married and they can also change their family names. And administrators have to change their passport data. This is a sanctioned change. But in this case, we cannot enter this part of the chain and change it. We cannot change it and then we need to recalculate all the chain. It costs a lot and it's not so safe. Because when you change, you can change everything. We need to avoid this state and we just write a new chain into the blockchain with the new data. But this new part parts a part of the chain. And along with the data of blockchain, we also receive a link to the configuration object. So what it is basically. And we see in the blockchain two links on the same object and at the report the client sees that we see a sanctioned changes alterations and for this point in time blockchain can prove this data what was put down into blockchain out of the system so just imagine your personal id data we can take all the fields from your personal ids but out of the accounting system we take not them we send not them but we calculate hash and we make a transfer of information uh, of a mixed information into blockchain you are just uh, uh, giving up your controlling sum and you don't have any locational relations you are not uh, sending a link to the document. Blockchain receives a very small bit and predictable bit of a hash sum. It is every time the same. You can send it parallel into three blockchains and then it stays in line to be uh, uh, written down. But this line takes not so long because our load test can make up to 10,000 notifications per second because the blockchain chain per se is not making anything it receives hash and some additional uh, rows then we have a previous transa transaction it is encrypted it is added to the blockchain then hash is calculated for the sum and encrypted everything is made by the platform you don't need any additional components you don't tear and wear anything, you just lay it down, forget about it and make 
another round and it is made in the frames of one transaction so the transaction is started information goes into blockchain when you put a button when you push the button write down the personal ID data and before all of the registers of blockchain tells you okay the transaction is not ended if you don't receive if, if you receive one uh, Oh, one information from blockchain, uh, you just face the mistake. And when there is a mistake, the work is on halt. And you cannot make a halt for a business, so therefore you choose the systems that are not uh, combined with the operative work, but they are combined with the accounting work. But what can happen? It could be a technical mistake, malfunction, this is one way, but someone could make a fraud copy of a blockchain base, so we could protect ourselves and the admin administrator goes into the systems and deletes one part of the blockchain. When will we get to know about this? So you need to make an audit of your blockchain. So we just uh, created one uh, regulating ta task and every client can understand, uh, can decide when to start it. And once, imagine that once for three minutes we are checking the integrity of blockchains. And here we face the problem of speed because we were thinking of 20 million of transactions per year you can you you can write it down it's not a problem but to check the regularities it takes it for too long so the first uh, check uh, took 40 minutes why does it take it so because you need to make 20 millions of decryptions you need to use your key and check the results of the this dec description you can compare it with the previous hash the hash of a previous uh, part of the chain and make it 20 millions of time but imagine one step here is one second so imagine 20 millions of seconds it takes too long then for us although when we told the client that previously you had two months now you have one and a half hours isn't, isn't that cool the client says yes it's great but i want to have it in seconds and here at this moment when i heard uh, this uh, wish from uh, the client i suddenly understood i understood why blockchain is block in the first and chain in the second position and it is not the the marketing thing i suppose we need to uh, check the transactions in the blocks so we are working basically with blocks blocks and this is another realization for us for 1c people you need to understand this you need to calculate it in the end and we created the second secondary blockchain that would uh, tackle the first blockchain and there were many discussions what trigger is so block is already 10 transactions 100 transactions 1 million or 5000 transactions what should be a block you cannot predict the result so how many blocks will you work with per one day so one block is a universal one operating day one business day you start your own task make a total control sum for one day for all the transactions and this is the next uh, uh, next part of uh, the blockchain then you are working with the same integrity of the chain then you take the blockchain of the previous day encrypt it count the hash add and encrypt it for the second time and store it and it doesn't play any role how many transactions this system you have and in the end we have 365 chains the thing is what should be proved proven so the report takes six seconds and during six seconds we could understand the whole blockchain we could check it but we also made a certain document in the inside of the system whether the blockchain has preserved its integrity. So the chain can be valid in the reality. But what does an auditor make? 
auditor comes to your place, opens the previous period, and takes all the documents for the previous month. Imagine there are 10,000 documents, but here in blockchain we have 20 millions of transactions. What do we do then? We check the integrity and whether we can uh, trust the blockchain. We take the days, we check the days, and every, if everything is the is okay for the day blocks, if there were not malfunctions in the integrity, we take the transactions, we make a regroup for the blocks, then we check the hashes, because the days were not were not altered. They are not changed. So we, when we have a mistake, we cannot work further. But still, uh, we just need to understand the transaction of this day, of today. There are up to 10,000 of transactions. And when we uh, see clear that you can trust to the blockchain for this day, we take the accounting system, take the data for only 10,000 elements, calculate their hash, and compare it to the blockchain data. And then we receive the answer, yes or no, or the answer can be made, can be given, provided for every transaction, so per one transaction, like transactions are changed uh, upon a sanction. The user system is uh, under, exp and, and the system is used for the last six months, I suppose. And here traditionally, in in the information that I deliver, I can also show some critical points in the work of Postgres, because this is my tradition. Suddenly, what do we, what, what did we face here? There are questions not towards one C, but perhaps this is uh, the lack of experience uh, of, of our experience when we started at, at Linux on a full load. The system could manage this load, but the load on the database was uh, increasingly high. It should not be like this, because there are not, not many entries there. There are, by default, big and uh, big memory pages and intoils. You can just uh, ask the question, what is the... What, what, why, why does it uh, like this? We put off the red hat, put off the page hoods, and in the red hat, I think at the, on the last page in the manual, it is stated that TPH is, TPH is great, don't touch it, but if it is a base database, please put it off. And this is the only um, wording for this case or for this pro problem. And at the end of, uh, in the end of 2018, on uh, Haber website, you could read one, uh, one great uh, story about the switch off of TPH. Because there is a joke about your grandfather who knows that uh, somebody died uh, of it, but he did not tell it about you. And the second uh, point here is a barrier, because uh, Yandex Cloud bans you from use uh, using this no barrier directive in Linux. It helped a lot. We could put on hash on the CD on on our disks SSDs, and it worked. And when it worked, the system was not less than uh, the Peter uh, showed. And there was a synchronous replica. And the second problem was that replicas are not handling this, like RAID, SS. SATA. It's great, but you can see on the graph, on the, uh, on the on the scheme, the numbers of the active work. You can just put off the backup for the years, make a replica for the previous years, and uh, it will make your life easier. And there, it was just only active writing. So the uh, uh, load, the first type was SSD replica and SATA with RAID 50. And the difference between them was uh, more than 1,000 seconds. So the 30% of work uh, was the master's work. If you have master's for SSD, uh, please make your replica on SSD. This is not so easy to understand and not to think of it. And the replica can uh, work with the regular rate 
and uh, the speed will be shown as 2 megabytes per second but the disk will be uh, under full load and there is no disk that can handle it only SSD so these are two two situations that I want to disclose it's not the Postgres fault but it, w it works like this and we wait for auditors wait for auditors auditors will come to us in March so the system will work in March for one year and I do hope that blockchain and 1C will not be a part of a joke but it will be a solved business problem of a client and this is one of the first blockchains that is made not for the sake of hype of uh, cryptocurrencies but this is the way to cope with uh, cryptocurrency issues yes 1C 1C will ask you for the structure of your metadata this is the commercial uh, commercial information. I already showed you everything. You can make it as a, your own code. But still, there is also one dandy interpreter for 1C, so interpreter dandy. And uh, the database for games is also on Postgres. And Anton has uh, several levels of information for productive uh, operations on Postgres. But here, thank you very much, Anton. Now Dima will prepare himself. We'll prepare for the next delivery. So, thank you very much. And.